What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Hot Toys R2-D2 MMS-651. This version is from Attack of the Clones and once you remove the sleeve you're able to see the 20 year anniversary badge and a nice shot of the figure. There's also a few of the mini accessories R2 and the C-3PO head that we'll show in detail later in the video. On the side of the box we get a nice little write up about R2 another shot of the figure, and of course the iconic Star Wars logo at the top. Moving to the back of the box, we get legal information and warnings, an awesome shot of R2 with all of his accessories attached, and another Star Wars logo, this time with Attack of the Clones included. This is my first R2-D2 figure, and I chose this one because of the weathering and the dirt on it. I prefer this look from the Battle of Geonosis as opposed to the more pristine look of other releases that came out previously. Opening the box, we see the case holding the batteries, which I've already installed, all of the attachments, a clear stand, R2's rocket thruster accessories, a tether cable, a Star Wars logo remote control, R2 himself, and a C-3PO head sculpt. On the top of the figure, you can deploy his periscope by pressing in on the appropriate section, and you're also able to spin this 360 degrees. This is just one of the many tricks R2 has up his little droid sleeve. R2 features quite a few different panels, which you can access using one of the magnetic accessories. Opening these panels allows us to see some intricate details inside and will also allow the installation of several different tools that he can use for various purposes. The doors can be a little finicky at times, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. The top portion of R2 is made of die cast and it can also rotate 360 degrees. This helps in getting the right pose to show off some of the LED lights, which I'll discuss momentarily. As for articulation, R2's legs can pivot along with his feet. The third leg can be seen on the bottom along with the wheels that come on each foot. You can access the third leg by pressing in on the bottom and pulling it down. Now you will want to reference the instruction manual for details on where each attachment goes. The majority of them are magnetic, but there are three that are keyed and you have to plug those in. We'll go ahead and open the rest of the panels on the front and side of R2 so we can start attaching the accessories. The two doors on the side will be used for his arms. Here's what he looks like with all of the front and side panels open. There's another panel on top that I'll show as well as one on the rear. On the head, you can see a few more locations that light up and you can really see the weathering detail all around. The side panels on his legs detach to allow the rocket boosters to attach. So now, we'll go ahead and begin installing the accessories. The first set are all magnetic and a few feature hinges so that you can angle them as needed. I really like the magnetic feature since it saves you the trouble of finding a bunch of tiny little ports. You will need to space them out a bit because if they're too close to one another, they tend to stick together. They've included a lot of detail and the paint applications are really well done here. These pieces are really sturdy so they don't feel fragile at all. Now we've seen R2 use these tools at various points throughout the movies. We have a life form scanner, computer terminal alarm, lockpick arms, a repair arm, a multifunction utility and interface arm, computer interface arms, a utility arm, a utility saw, universal computer interface arm, and the saw features a spinning blade and a peg so that it can be ported in place. You can feel free to mix and match these accessories as you like. For photography, this is really nice. I was actually surprised how many different scenes you can put R2 in using these pieces to tell a story. Plus, you can pose him with numerous other characters from across the original trilogy, the prequels, and even the sequels. Here he is with all accessories installed on the front. His arms have joints that allow them to pivot, and they attach magnetically to each side. Opening the other panel on the top will allow us to peg in our next accessory, the light form scanner. Fortunately, the peg hole is large enough to make installation pretty easy. Now, of course, you can pose R2 with all of his accessories attached if you want. We have seen this happen in the films when he gets electrocuted. 
But for me, I'll probably routinely just swap out different pieces and have him pose differently in my display. Taking a look at C-3PO's head, you can separate it to install the batteries, which will allow it to light up. There's a switch inside to turn it on and the LEDs are super bright. It is a bit hard to tell on camera, but when they're lit up, it really comes to life. On the rear is the final panel that we need to open. There's more detail inside and there's a tiny port that we'll use to attach the tether cable. You simply plug it in. On the end is a magnet that you can use to attach to C-3PO's head if you want to recreate the scene from Attack of the Clones during the Battle of Geonosis. Next, we'll remove the side panels and install the rocket thrusters. There's two components for each side. You'll want to install the lower piece first so that you don't have to struggle to get around the flame effects on the thrusters. Both of these pieces just peg into place. I'm going to use the stand so that I can adjust the legs once the accessories are installed. And R2 can sit on the stand in either direction so you can display them in flight mode. Taking a look at the remote control, there's an on off switch on the top and I think it was a nice touch to use the Star Wars logo. You can press the R button to turn on the lights and the W button to activate sounds. You will need to have the remote pointed at the front of R2 for it to work though. Overall, I'm really impressed with this release. I put off getting an R2 because I thought it would be more of a companion piece. And while he does look good paired with other figures, the accessories and all the detail really allow him to stand alone in your collection if you so choose. So if you're on the fence, I'd say get off and buy this release. It's pretty awesome. Stay tuned for more content, subscribe if you haven't already, and give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.